day in the tech world, specifically when we're talking about Apple. Shares of the company are up 1.5% in after hours trading. Shortly after the closing bell on Wall Street, Apple released earnings that blew past estimates. That's thanks in part to strong demand for its latest iPhones. But earnings weren't the only story of the day for Apple. CCTV's Mark New is in San Francisco with the rest. Mark, give us the details. Karina Apple reported earnings of $1.42 on revenue of $42.1 billion. Wall Street had expected $1.31 on $39.9 billion, so Apple beats on both the bottom and the top. The big numbers, though, iPhone sales of 39.3 million units. That's up 16% from a year ago. iPad shipments hit 12.3 million. That's a drop of 13% year over year. The numbers appear to verify that consumers just don't replace their tablets very frequently, and it's also very possible larger iPhones are cannibalizing iPad sales. However, the numbers on Mac computers did look good. Apple shipped 5.52 million units, a rise of 21% year-on-year, the best quarter in the history of the Mac. The new larger iPhone 6 handsets were released on September 19th. Apple recently said it had sold more than 10 million of the new phones, but in the earnings call, CEO Tim Cook refused to clarify whether it was the iPhone 6 or larger 6 Plus that was driving those sales. Now, today was also a big day for Apple for another reason. Apple Pay officially launched through the iOS 8.1 operating system update. Through Apple Pay, users can register a credit card merely by taking a photo of it, then place a finger over the Touch ID and voila, you have a purchase. Apple Pay supports credit and debit cards from the three major payment networks, American Express, MasterCard and Visa. It will work at more than 220,000 merchant locations across the U.S. that have contactless payment enabled. Some of those on board include McDonald's, Macy's, Subway, Walgreens. There's still a lot of missing, though, as, for example, retailer Walmart said has no plans to join Apple Pay. Of course, of course, Apple is not the first to come out with near-field communication or NFC payment capabilities, as Android has had it for some time. But tech analyst Bob O'Donnell from Tech Analysis Research says Apple Pay is not too late to the game, and that the timing may be actually quite good. I think Apple actually timed things quite well, because, especially in the U.S., because next year, um, we're moving to chip and pin based credit cards. So that's going to require traditional retail stores to change out all of their uh, swipe uh, card readers anyway. And if they're going to change them out anyway, they might as well get one that allows contactless NFC based payments. And if you're worried about Big Brother and too much data collection in Apple's earnings call, CEO Tim Cook staunchly proclaimed that Apple is not in the business of selling your data. The company claims Apple Pay will not collect your purchase history, so it has no idea what you bought, where you bought it, or how much you paid for it. Karina. Thank you. That's Mark New in San Francisco live for us.